software engineering. The first objective here is to describe the types of software tools that have been designed to assist the software engineering process. Now, unfortunately, if you look these topics up in most of the textbooks that are available at the moment for our subject, this doesn't do a lot of justice to it. The software tools are pretty much baked in to a lot of the stuff you've used already. So let's have a look. Now, an IDE or an integrated development environment is a suite of technologies that make the development of code more straightforward. You've undoubtedly use an IDE in your software development. And if you haven't, it's probably because your network admins are a bit mean and only installed idle for Python, which is pretty much the text editor, but technically an IDE. You may just have gone very 1970s and typed text into a console, clicked save, and then run the interpreter on it, but they help us create programs of a better quality. Now, most software developers use some or all of these tools to speed up their development processes and you'll see how many of these look familiar to you. The first is code auto-completion. You'll see from the example here that as I'm typing, I'm getting suggestions for functions and variable names that we might want to use. And I'm just pressing the tab key on my keyboard to complete the auto-completion. This is brilliant because it means that I'm not doing quite so much typing, especially if I'm reusing variables. Bracket matching then, when you click on a bracket, either a parenthesis, a curly brace or a square bracket, it'll show you the matching bracket to that. And that's really, really useful because identifying logical code snippets and seeing where brackets start and finish makes a big difference to how we code. Syntax checks happen live when you type and underline or show you where there's an error and tell you what that might be before you click the run button. And that saves time in seeing those errors before we click go. Syntax highlighting uses different colors for different parts of the syntax. Variables, functions, and data types are often color coded differently to make it clear what's going on. For instance, in this, you'll see the range function is in green and you'll see that strings are in red. Stepping, which some of you may not have used, is a really useful way of running through your code. It basically runs it one line at a time. And you'll see here as well on the right hand side that variable watch shows us the value of those variables at each step and how they are changing. This makes it really easy to interrogate that code and work out what's actually going on. Breakpoints are great. They allow me to identify a line of code where I want my code to stop executing and tell me the variables. And that's exactly what's going on here. If I stop it on line three, it runs the program, pauses it there and tells me everything that the and tells me all the values of the variables to that point. And that helps me debug. The next set of objectives are to explain the role of appropriate software packages in systems analysis, system specification, design and testing. So essentially here what we're talking about is CASE tools. Now CASE is an acronym for Computer Aided Software Engineering and because computer scientists are comedy geniuses, uh, we have two sections of this, the uppercase tools, which deal with planning, analysis, and design, so everything before the coding starts, and lowercase tools, which deals with implementation, testing, and maintenance once you've started actually building the thing in the first place. Analysis tools are really quite nice. They're mainly places for us to be able to dump and collate bunches of source material, interviews, observations, examples of pieces of work that the company are doing, as well as sort of working collaboratively with other analysts. And we can enter loads of information. Now, the lead analyst would then coordinate that, pull it all together and write a report and probably the requirements specification as a result of that. Creating diagrams then is really useful. Things like flowcharts, or in this case, entity relationship diagrams are much easier to build with computer systems because the links become dynamic and as things move around, it doesn't break the diagram. We've also got project planning tools and they allow the creation of things like Gantt charts and other plans to coordinate the development amongst the teams. And this allows for us to better schedule and better have an idea of how long things are gonna take. Collaboration tools as well for sharing resources like design elements, user experience designs and stuff like that to aid in the planning and development of the system. And you can see how these really speed up design by having a basic plan for how every page looks built by one person, we can drag that in and customize it for the rest of the pages in the site or the application that we're developing for. Then we get onto automated testing tools and the idea being that 
every time we build the software, especially if it's a very large piece of software, we want to test everything that we've already tested once again to make sure that we haven't broken anything. Now what we do then is we create a suite of automated tests that run automatically. And the automated testing program basically tells us if it starts failing any of the tests that it previously passed. And this is a much quicker way of doing large scale testing. Bug tracking software will allow us to report bugs, make notes on them, update the person that posted the bug in the first place, and file completion reports and close those bugs if we fix them. It helps us get an idea about which bugs are causing the most problems and what we're working on as a whole. Finally, test planning allows the creation of manual test plans and coordinating that manual testing with the bug tracking software. So we can incorporate bugs that have been found or take off bugs that have been solved. The final objective in this unit is to explain program version management. Now, what is that? You've probably used some method of this, but what most people do unless they're doing this properly, is that you end up sending files back and forth that end up version one, version two, final, 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 definitely the last file. You've done this yourself, I'm sure, and you send files back and forth in a team. Now, version management allows us to work in a big team to coordinate and keep copies of every change we've made. Now, that's really important because you can imagine that if we're doing a lot of updates to our code, that we can accidentally delete or break something, and then we can just move back through the versions. Version management software, usually like something like Git, uh, commercially run by Microsoft as GitHub, allows us to check in and check out files so we can say, I'm working on this and I've now updated it, here it is, and keep that entire history of who's worked on what, who's done what, and record that change management. I've recorded just some examples of some check-in and check-outs I've done to a piece of software I've been working on here, and you'll see that it's got a list of the files that have changed, I've got some notes from me, and if we click on any of those files to take a look at them, it'll show us the parts that have been changed and the parts that have been added from that file. In this case, you'll see we've got eight lines of insertions and eight deleted lines. There are bits in red that have been deleted there. So we can see the changes that are happening bit by bit as we go. And if we need to revert to any of those, we can do.